There's many different ways to get cutting information from a computer to a CNC machine to actually cut something out. And the way I'm going to show you today is a nice workflow that it seems to be working quite well for me. And that is to use SketchUp to design what I want to cut, MakerCam.com to actually create the tool paths for what I want to cut, and Universal G-Code Sender to send that information to the CNC to actually do the cutting. Now I've already created a 3D model here in SketchUp. You don't have to do a 3D model, you can do a 2D model as well. But this is basically just a 5.3 inch knob and a little riser block that fits inside this recess. So this is the geometry that I want. But in order for this plugin to work, which I'll have links to all the uh, software and plugins in the website article for this, but th basically the plugin I'm using is SketchUp to an SVG converter. So. In order to get an SVG out of this, we need to have all of our faces that we want to cut on the same plane. So this little recess right here needs to be on this face, and this face right here needs to be on this face. Also, we can't have a bunch of components here because then you end up selecting all of the faces at the same time when really all we want is the top face. So let me both uh, select both of these, right click and say explode. So they are no longer components. This is all just model space. Let's triple click to select all of this, M for move, and let's click on the top face, press up on the keyboard so we constrain to the blue axis, and I want this top face to be on the same plane as this top face. So now these two are coplanar. Now I want to do the same thing with this one, M for move or push pull, grab the top of this face and press up on the keyboard to constrain to the blue axis, and I want it to be on this face as well. So now all three of these are on the same plane and I can select one, hold the shift to select the next one, and select the third one. So this is the geometry that I want to create an SVG file, and you need an SVG file for MakerCam. So this is the plugin create 2D SVG from selected faces, and this is the menu that pops up. First, I want to change this to inches. I'm not sure if it really matters, but I work in inches. So you can use millimeters or inches, whichever you prefer, and a uh, save the SVG in the following directory. I'm going to change this to my Dropbox CNC and SVG. Change the file name to, uh, let's do this a star knob test. And we also need to put .svg. We have to put the file name here. Click save. So this is going to save it in my CNC folder, SVG star knob test .svg. That's pretty much it. Click save and it created it. The next step is to open up your file in MakerCam.com and MakerCam is a tool that we can use to create our own tool paths uh, and then export G-code from it. So if you're not familiar with MakerCam, it's super easy and there's a little tutorial up here that will guide you through the process. So what I'm going to do is file, open my SVG file and this one was a star knob test and that is the SVG file I just created. Now this is your X and Y axis, this point right here being your zero, zero, your home area. So what I'm gonna do is actually move these a little bit closer, not 100% necessary, but it will reduce waste when I go to cut this out. Now think about how you want this to be cut out and create the tool paths in that particular order. That way they're already there for you. It doesn't make sense if the bit is going to start here to cut this profile, then back, come back here to cut this hole, then come back here to cut this hole. It makes sense to just go in order from where you're starting. So the first thing we can do is select this circle right here. This is a quarter inch hole and I'm using a quarter inch uh, bit in the the machine so I can really just plunge the bit right here and make that entire pass, uh, make that entire cut. So we're going to use a drilling operation for this because you're just going straight down. So cam drill operation and my tool diameter is 0.25. My target depth, I am using 3 quarter inch plywood but it's not technically 3 quarter inch. It's a little bit less than that so if I just leave it at 3 quarters it will cut all the way through. And we are, uh, the, we are drilling in the center of this path right here. We're only going to go down one time, so we don't need to do spacing. Safety height, this is how high the bit can um, be above the workpiece as it's traveling. So we'll go 0.125 inches, 1 8th of an inch is fine. 
peck distance. If you want to make this hole drilled in five or six different pecks into the material, you can do that. But for me, I've had success just going full depth on one peck. So it'll drill all the way through and I'll slow my plunge rate down to 10 inches per minute. Press OK and that one is set up to be a drilled hole. This is a profile. I need to cut the outside of this. So let's go to cam profile operation from the outside. Uh, quarter inch tool diameter is correct. 0.75 is my depth. That is correct. Safety height. Let's go to 0.125, 1 8 of an inch. The step down. Now the step down totally depends on the um, your cutting tools that you have. I'm using a quarter inch bit and a router which can hog out a lot of material but I'm just going to go with 0.1 inches and set the feed rate to 50. That may seem a little fast but I've had good success with it. Plunge rate is 30. We'll just leave that there. After here I need to start in the center of this one again so let's click on this. We're going to do another drilling operation just as before. 0.25 is my diameter, 3 quarter inch is my depth. We don't need to do any hole spacing because it's just one of them. And the peck distance, let's change that to 0.75 because we're going to do this in one, one plunge all the way through. And the safety height, 0.125. After there, this is just going to be a shallow, small, small, small little pocket for this to uh, be recessed in. That way, this drilled hole and this drilled hole will be concentric. So let's click this. We're going to do a shallow pocket operation, which is just a just hogging out all of this material. But we're not going to go a full three quarters of an inch depth. Like I said, we just want to do just a little bit. So let's go 0 0.05 inches, just enough to reference that uh, block right here. Safety height 0.125 inches, and my step down. Uh, we'll just leave it the same as the target depth. Feed rate. Let's change this back to 50 and 30 for the plunge. That should be fine. My last cut will be this outside profile cut. So let's go to cam profile. Change, uh, leave the tool diameter the same, target depth the same, safety height 0.125. Step down, we're gonna go 0.1. Probably could go more aggressive than that than I have before, but that's just fine. 50 for my feed rate and 30 for my plunge rate. Now, like I said, all of these are specific to the setup that you do have. So don't use mine unless you're using the exact same tooling that I am. Press OK. Now we have the, the specifications set for our tool paths, but we need to calculate them. So let's go to CAM, calculate all, and it will process these. Now this green arrow, uh, these green arrows all you see all the way here are where the bit will start the cut, and then it will travel along this path. You can also select view cuts up here, and you can see where the actual material will be removed. I'm using a quarter inch bit, so it's going to remove quite a bit. Now, we want to have some tabs on these pieces because I am cutting these out and I don't want the, the cut to complete and then fling this piece somewhere. So along this one, and actually I'm gonna select both of these tool paths like so. I've got both of these profiles set. And let's go to cam, uh, add tabs to selected. Now I have find it easier to create way more than what's necessary and then just delete them. Delete them after you have the ones you have in place where you need them. So let's just say the tab spacing is, I don't know, two inches. Tab width. This tab width does not take into consideration the diameter of your bit. So if you have a quarter inch bit and you want a quarter inch tab, uh, you have to set this actually to 0.5 inches because it's going to remove the diameter of your bit. So keep that in mind, a 0.5 inch tab with a quarter inch bit will actually leave you with a physical 0.25 inch tab width. Tab height, that's fine, we'll just leave it there. Now, let's go ahead and delete the ones we don't want first. This, this big one right here, two is gonna be fine, so I can delete three on it. Click and delete, click and delete, and click and delete. Now this one is on the edge, so let's move it over here so it won't be removed. Uh, this is the edge of my plywood here. So just position these wherever you want them. Yeah, that, that's going to be fine there. And from here, everything's done. My paths are done. My tabs are done. I'm ready to go to export G-code. 
And remember, I started my toolpaths in the order in which I wanted them cut. So they're already in the proper order. However, if you want to modify that, you can select one of these and press up or down to change its order. One, two, three, four, five. These are already in the order that I want. So I'm going to select all of these and export selected toolpaths. And from here, I can change my folder to my G code folder and go to star, star knob test. Click save. My G code is made, and now I can open up uh, Universal G code sender to actually send the, the data to the machine. First thing in Universal G Code Center is to open the connection to your actual CNC machine. And I always like to make sure that I'm at the home position. So machine control reset zero, and that creates zero, zero, zero in my work position. In file mode, we can browse for the file, and it is the star knob test. Open that up and click visualize. And what this will do is it will create a visualization of what's about to happen. The bit is this yellow piece right here. It's going to start. Every, everything that is green is a vertical plunge. Blue is where the bit is traveling without making any cuts. So it's going to plunge down here and then cut this out and then go in the correct order in which we had it. You can see the tabs that are created right here. Once everything checks out and you know what that looks like I was planning it to look like, then you can Go ahead and start your machine, click send, and cut the piece out. Because these were designed with the precision of SketchUp and cut with the precision of the CNC machine, this riser block should fit in here absolutely perfectly with no glue at all. A nice snug fit. If you did like this video, you'd probably like a lot more of my other stuff. So check out my website and sign up for my email newsletters so you don't miss a thing. There's a lot of stuff on my website that doesn't necessarily make it here to YouTube. Good luck on your next project and have a great day.